It's a wet South London morning in the month of May, a month that signifies so much, but in the world of football, it means even more. All the hard work over the tough winter months comes down to this. All the highs and lows, the last minute winners, the nail biting finishes, the comfortable victories and the disappointing defeats, they've all been leading here. And there may just be 90 minutes of Palace's first season as a Category 1 Academy remaining, but whatever happens this morning, it's a campaign they can look back on with pride. But there may yet be another chapter, an extended finale, which sees them crown the country's best young side and gives them the opportunity of a lifetime to take Palace into Europe and who knows uh, where else. Second corner for West Brom and this time it's taken short. It's not round the corner and a chance to cross now. The ball is in and it's in the back of the net and West Brom take an early lead. And it was clearly a set piece that had been worked on from the training ground and Palace were caught out and the header is in from just six yards out and Crystal Palace's task has suddenly become a whole lot harder. Palace nil, West Brom won. Yeah, that was a real poor situation that we didn't deal with particularly well. I mean, you mentioned the set play routine, but... And what can Crystal Palace do in response? Here is David Omalabu, he's shrugged off the attention of Williams and he has Adaramola in support. Chance to cross now, the ball does come in, it's pulled back. It's eventually cleared, who will it fall to? Raksaki's shot is blocked and it will go behind for a corner. It's purposeful in the box and it's a major strength of, of young Teo's game. Well, Omalabu's robbed the ball back here again and Palace on top as it stands. The ball is only headed as far as Kadogan. Lays it off to Raksaki. And this time it's wide. Palace's best chance of the game. He's got Kadogan in support who picks up the ball now and does well to hold it under pressure but eventually is crowded out. He's won it back though. Ball in towards Akinwale who gets a touch away. Here is Victor Akinwale. Cleared off the line. Now Raksaki surely and it's in the back of the net. And that is 1-1. And just moments after missing, perhaps an even easier chance than that one. Raksaki makes up for it. He's got the ball in the back of the net and Palace are level. And it's Jezra and Raksaki once again. Well, it was a brilliant breakaway, wasn't it? Fantastic by three or four players. Malik does really well, holds off his man. I thought he was going to get barged out, but got his head up in wide areas. And it's a brilliant first touch there by Victor. And uh, he was looking for the shot himself and it was a <laughs> quite a fantastic block on the line. But boys now he's trying to keep it quick. He's trying to get us back on the front foot again. And we've definitely done that. Here's Tayo Adaramola in behind. Can he pick a man out? It's, oh, it's Victor Akinwale this time. And Palace are 2-1 up. And how quick was that? Well, this is, this is what I mean about this team. Every time something goes against us, you know, we always manage to return and reply very, very quickly. Not sure if it was a foul. The, the fullback for West Brom will be looking at the referee. But we mentioned about that little bit of calmness in the final third. And Teo once again just pulled out Victor and Victor got his goal. And he'll be delighted with that. It was a good little finish into the bottom corner. Rodney will hook it back. Headed on by Sheridan and now Raksaki again. This time he cuts onto his left foot. Raksaki shoots. And this time it's just over the crossbar. I'll just pause as Adaramola comes forward on the edge of the box. Chance to get across in towards the back post. Raksaki gets there. It's a good save. Falls for Kadogan and then hooked off the line. Well, another big chance for Jezza and Raksaki, but the but then a Jack Wells Morrison have just got to be aware that you know we're not sloppy. We don't get caught on the counter. Here is Victor Akinwale. The referee's not given a foul and he's advancing on the keeper now. Squares it and it is three. And just like that, Palace go from one end of the field to the other. And they boost their advantage in this game. It's a two-goal cushion. And it's Palace three, West Brom one. And it's a brilliant time to score. It really is, again, just one of them little lofted passes. Don't want to put too much power on the ball. A lovely little run by Victor there. Got his head up early, seen the advancing players. And it was on a plate, wasn't it, for, for Malik. And he'll be delighted with that. Let's just look at the way that clearance has only made it as far as Palace's final third. Here is David Omalabu, who's made space for the shot, and he's found the bottom corner. And David Omalabu gets his customary goal, and Palace have four. 
And I think this performance just highlights just how impressive the first half was against this wind. You know, we took control of the first half, come away with a 2-1 um, scoreline at half-time. And now, just look at this. This starts with the goalkeeper. He just can't get it out of his box. It's so strong, this wind. But we've pounced on it and brilliant by David. He wiggles and jiggles inside the 18-yard box and a lovely little finish into the far corner. Comes forward. He's got options ahead of him, as always. Here's Raksaki. Laid off now for Omelabu. And what a finish that is. And David Omelabu gets his second goal of the game. And Palace do have their fifth. And that is just emphatic from Paddy McCarthy's young side going forwards. Oh, it's a brilliant counter play. It really is. The first pass out of pressure is vitally important. But it's the combination play on the edge of the box that excites me. It's a lovely little, a good little ball down the line to John. And John connected. Aidan Steele keen to get on with it quickly. And here comes Adaramola into the box. Pulls the ball back to Kamani Gordon. Go it's a really nice yes. turn and it's a really nice finish. And Palace do end the season on a high. <laughs> John Kamani Gordon gets his name on the score sheet. Palace have six and what a goal it was. And I'm delighted for him, I really am. I mean, he made that long trip up to Middlesbrough with us yesterday. Didn't get on the pitch, came back on the train, was on the bench for the team today and he's made his impact and he's got his goal. And this takes him into the end of the season. Whatever happens for John, he'll be ending his season on a high. And that's fantastic. A real, real deserved goal for him. They've thrown the gauntlet down to Fulham. And here is Aidan Steele. Maybe looking for a goal himself. Instead, he lays it back to Cadogan across the face of goal. And it is seven. And it's deja vu in the most horrible way for West Bromwich Albion because for the second time against Crystal Palace this season, they're on the end of a 7-1 drubbing. And this time it was Adam Ola, Ola Adabomi, tapping in from just a couple of yards out. And Crystal Palace have made light work of this important game today. They are 7-1 up. Well, unfortunately for this West Brom team, it's deja vu once again, isn't it? Same scoreline, same dominant performance and even better the substitutions look at the reaction from our bench the lads that have come off and really backing each other and that's just a great sight to see it really is 7-1 so destructive in the second half and it's fantastic well that is that Palace have won the battle we'll wait to find out whether they'll win the war the action continues at Fulham still nil-nil there but the title is very much up for grabs and Paddy McCarthy's men have done absolutely all they can. They've dismissed West Brom. A job well done for Crystal Palace. Full time here. And Crystal Palace will now await the news from their West London rivals. They are currently top of the league. Crystal Palace 7, West Bromwich Albion 1.